Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this uh, Tuesday, November 1st, and we are now waiting to see what the final data is with regards to uh, Siberian snow cover growth. And, you know, I found this tweet. I follow Dr. Judah Cohen uh, on uh, Twitter, and uh, Dr. Cohen actually is the man who came up with this whole uh, concept of uh, Siberian snow cover and its impact on uh, the winter here in the eastern part of the United States. And he uh, tweeted yesterday uh, the snow cover map for the last day of the month and, and said, uh, clearly I set a challenge too high, but here is a teaser. Eurasian snow cover has achieved statistics not accomplished in at least 40 years. Now, I'm not sure if he's ref what exactly he's referring to. The snow cover growth did finish uh, very, very robust. So I guess we're going to have to just wait for his blog, which comes out uh, usually on Wednesdays. But I just want to show you where we all finished on the chart. And we finished a very strong number two. Uh, the, just to reiterate, it's the rate of growth of snow cover in Siberia during the month of October, particularly in the southern flank, which is the area south of 60 degrees north. The faster that snow cover grows, um, the greater the probability of a colder and snowier winter in the eastern part of the United States. We just want to point out that this does not seem to work in El Nino years uh, because uh, we uh, went and looked back for a couple of them anyway, um, and they did not work last year when the snow cover growth was almost as robust as it is this year. Um, but, um, you know, so we'll take that out of the equation. Number one here is the winter of 2014-2015, which was uh, very cold in the northeastern part of the U.S. And number three, um, taking out last year, would be the winter of 13-14, which was also very cold. Now, um, I just want to show you uh, one more time in terms of the larger scale map, and you can see it here. Um, what, I, what is important is... Again, as we said, that area south of 60 degrees north, which if uh, we look on the map is right there. So it's the snow cover that's south of this area that's important. And uh, we finished uh, with a very robust snow growth. Also, when I look back, um, the fact that there wasn't very much snow in western Siberia is important as well because that seems to occur in winters that are active in the eastern part of the United States. And when we see the snow cover growth more in the west than in the south, um, that uh, portends for a winter that is not as cold and not as snowy. So we'll get all the final data. I'm going to be putting out my winter forecast sometime in the next couple of days. So just look for that. If I get really um, worked up about it, I might even get it done later today. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But I want to go to the short range uh, weather that we have uh, to deal with at the moment, which is pretty quiet. I, I thought I'd show you what exactly, uh, how exactly blocking um, works. I think this is a pretty good example of uh, well, the weather here in the east as we go through the next couple of days. If you if you take a look, um, we're at Tuesday, Wednesday, and now we have the end of the week. Now, what's happening is um, you have this next trough that approaches the coast and it's right there and this is for Friday morning but you can see back through here this is the big upper high that's building out in the Atlantic and it's basically preventing uh, things from moving along uh, from west to east and uh, you, you see it here um, you're gonna see it in a loop what happens this trough in the east it does not uh, is not able to move out of the way you see how it just kinda gets into eastern Canada and sits there so as a result what happens is that uh, about the only place that it's going to be chilly um, this weekend will be in the northeast and mid-Atlantic states. It's cold air bleeds down from Canada. So here's your block, and that kind of locks in that vortex. All back through here, it's very warm uh, up through uh, the northern plains and into south-central Canada. But this block is keeping this vortex in place and keeping the northeast chilly but dry. So that's the weather pattern that we have to look forward to. And with regards to uh, the day-to-day -day weather, I'll uh, switch uh, to um, a different range here. Let's go to a different region, and we can take a look at this. Um, and you can see what's going to be happening in, in the northeast as far as the rest of the week. I'll back up. And, you know, we're going to warm up into Thursday. Here's a cold front that comes through 
Thursday evening. We'll have some rain and showers Thursday night, and then colder air comes down behind it on Friday. The front is uh, way offshore, and it's back through here, and we have gusty winds and, and cold air that's coming down from the north, and it actually penetrates all the way down into the mid-Atlantic states. The one thing about that upper air pattern is, by the way, is the fact that it, it is going to be basically dry. So we don't have any kind of a big storm. Sometimes you can get, um, you know, these blocking systems can wind up dropping some kind of a low southward, and it was sort of doing that um, a couple of days ago. Then it just sort of backed off uh, yesterday and last night. But if you look here through the weekend and into early next week on the GFS model, it just stays very chilly where we get these dashed blue lines. That's colder air, and it just stays chilly until the block weakens enough and the vortex pulls out along about Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. And then it does have some action in terms of a bit of a storm system that's going to try and bring some rain here later next week. Uh, this would be after Election Day. But, you know, beyond that, there really isn't too much going on. We're still waiting to see how the pattern is going to evolve as far as the second half of the month is concerned and going into early December. I'm still maintaining the idea that we are going to see uh, a uh, colder than average pattern and perhaps a few uh, early wintertime threats in the east um, with regards to uh, snow. So we'll see how that all plays out. Anyway, have a great Monday, uh, 1st of November. I'm sorry, great Tuesday, 1st of November. And don't forget, check out the latest weather on meteorologist joechaffee.com, weatherlongisland.com, nycweathernow.com, and ssstormchasers.com.